make sure I'm connected today. Okay, think I'm good. Good evening, good evening. This is Vanessa Brooks, Minister Vanessa Brooks for Trinity Destiny Ministry on live tonight for our Thursday night Bible study. Uh, very good. If you're there, please go ahead and join. Let me know that you're with me on tonight. Uh, we got a new lesson and I'm anxious to go ahead and uh, introduce you to this particular topic. Um, hey, Adrian, good to see you on tonight. If there's anyone else on, please let me know that you're on. Go ahead and join and feel free to share as well if you would like. We're going to talk tonight about perspective, okay? What is your perspective? Uh, what kind of perspective do you have? How do you address life and decisions and tests and trials and loss and uh, just change, you know, change. God is doing some things in our lives and, um, you know, he always knows what he's doing. He never makes mistakes. Um, he's shifting some things and sometimes purging is necessary. Um, sometimes he's got to, to, to uproot and um, re, re, rebuild some folks in some ways. So um, he's, he's doing some things to achieve his purpose in our lives. And we certainly want him to do that. Um, but we have to know how to have the right perspective and the right perception uh, when he begins to do that kind of work in our lives. You know, how do we respond to that kind of stuff? Um, do, we, do we operate with spiritual blinders on so we miss out on what he's trying to do? Or are we willing uh, to let him um, do a work as we look at ourselves and realize that we need some work, <laughs> you know, so we allow him to, to do it, whatever it is that he wants to do. So we're going to talk about, um, again, perspective. If you're on tonight, please let me know that you are there. Go ahead and, uh, join so we can jump right into our, our lesson and not to be too long on this Thursday. So we're going to be coming out of, um, Isaiah six. Um, it is a familiar Old Testament passage, um, but we're going to use Isaiah as, as a basis for talking about uh, new perspective and change and how that, you know, how it works and how it can look at many times, you know, completely unexpected. Um, but again, as I said, God always seems to know what he's doing. So I'm just going to give... Uh, one more minute or so. I know we started just a little bit late, just trying to get set up and whatnot. So again, if you're on tonight, please go ahead and join. Uh, let me know that you're there. Give me a quick wave or whatever the case may be. Sandra Grant, I see you on tonight. Thanks so much for joining as well. I hope you all had a good Thursday, a good week thus far. Um, a lot of things going on, a lot of things going on. I know the kids are back finally into school and traffic is doing what it's doing. Uh, but I pray that everything is well with you all and your families as we're, um, oh gosh, getting ready to wind up the summer already. So um, again, we're going to go ahead and get into Isaiah chapter 6. If you have your Bibles with you, um, you can follow along as we break it down just a little bit. Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. Um, basically the commissioning of, of, of Isaiah, actually. So um, we're going to go ahead and jump right into prayer and let folks just join as they feel led to do so and get right into our study for tonight. Okay. All right. All right. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for another beautiful day. God, another awesome day that you have made. Father, we thank you, Father God, for your continued Grace and mercy you extended us, O oh God, throughout the day, your sustaining power, the God that sustained us all this week, O oh God, unto this very moment, this very second, and we're grateful. So we thank you, God, for your love, for your strength, for your power, for your forgiveness, Lord God. We thank you that you continue to take the time with us like you do, Father God. We thank you that you yet um, are waiting on us and listening to us and and moving in our lives, oh God, that you at times remind us that you are yet with us, that you are yet there, that we are not alone, oh God, that we can trust in you, we can believe in you, and we can have faith in you, God. Father, we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you make yourself known to us, Lord. So, Father, we pray tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will search us now, oh God, 
Search us, O God, anything that displeases you, O God. Father, we ask that you would deal with us, that you would purge and prune us, O God, that you would forgive us, O God, where we have sinned, O God. Father God, we pray that you prepare us now to receive a fresh word from you tonight, Father God, that we may understand your word even the better, even the more, that we may see ourselves, God, in your word and be able to be in a place to allow you to, to transform, O God. Uh, to grow us up, O oh God. Father, we thank you for the opportunity and the privilege, O oh God. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So as I stated, we're going to go right into Isaiah 6, uh, 1 through 8. So um, again, if you have your Bibles, I'm just going to read through that entire passage. And then I'm going to just start breaking it down and talking about, um, I believe I've got three or four dynamics also that I want to uh, address as we go through it tonight. This, in fact, was uh, a sermon, actually, that I had preached uh, sometime last year, and uh, God just laid it on my heart to 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 bring this out and, and give a, a nice little lesson tonight on it as well. So let's just start with uh, Isaiah 6, starting at verse 1, and it says, In the year that King Isaiah died, okay, this is Isaiah, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Hey, Vicki Wormsby, good to see you. We're in Isaiah 6, starting at chapter, um, verse 1, Isaiah 6, verse 1. The train of his robe filled the temple. Verse 2. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Verse four. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Isaiah said, woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken from the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity, your sin is taken away and your sin is purged. Verse eight. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. So again, this is this is the commissioning of Isaiah to go. God is, is in fact commissioning him. And this here, of course, is a vision that God gave him. And um, I want to take a moment now to talk about a changing of perspective, a changing of perspective. Okay. So the first thing that uh, we want to probably notice when we take a look at these passages that we just read. Um, the first thing, it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, okay, Isaiah said he saw the Lord. So first thing we want to notice that a shifting took place. Something something shifted um, in, in, in that particular moment, okay. King Uzziah died. Did he have to die? That's a good question. OK, I've been kind of researching that myself. You know, what was the connection between King Isaiah dying and um, for Isaiah to actually be able to see the Lord and, and this vision, you know, God unfolding this in this envision and this commissioning at, at that particular time in his life. And um, what I surmise is that I, I discovered that um, Isaiah is actually the cousin of King Uzziah. So he was royalty, you know, of course a prophet, but royalty and operating on, on some level um, in, in that, that royal atmosphere with his, um, with his uncle and, and, um, or, his, or his cousin. And he um, was close to him, you know, so he has some, a few privileges and whatnot, um, doing a little bit of work um, with the king and all of that. Um, but it was time for the king to die. So some sort of shifting had taken place. And then um, God allowed Isaiah 
to see some things that was going to change his perspective. So we're talking about changing perspective. Something happened after the shifting took place. So this shifting, for whatever reason, had to take place, and then something happened in his life. That's the first thing I wanted you to take note of. And then if you go down to verse 5, the second thing I want you to note is that after he had a chance um, to experience you know, what he saw in the vision with actually getting a chance to see the Lord, the greatness and the awesomeness of the Lord and, and the seraphim and, and all that they were doing, and you know, he... he he was in the presence of God. You know, he was in the presence of God in this vision. And when you are able to get in a place where you can actually, I like to say, experience God, okay? Not just know him, but experience God. And God is able to take you to a certain place, a certain level of him where you are able to experience him such that you will not doubt anymore if he's real or not be able to have some sort of experience. You see him doing something in your life that you know it only is him. It's only him that could have done it. Only him that's doing it. Um, we know that it's him, the greatness of it. And when we're able to be in that place to see that greatness, you know, it, it should force us to really take a look at ourselves and realize, you know, how small and menial we really are compared to the great God, as great as he is, the creator of all things, you know, that he would take the time to, um, you know, come to, to little old us and, 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 and do a work in our lives, to be concerned about the little things that we're concerned about, to be concerned about us with everything that's going on in this world, you know, he's taking the time to be concerned about us. And we have to take a look at ourselves when we stand up next to greatness like that and take some self-examination. I always say taking self-examination to see where we are and some things that we maybe need to deal with. And Isaiah said, woe is me. You know, once his, his eyes are open to see all of this, he was like, oh, my God, you know, I'm you know, I'm undone. I'm a I'm a I'm a wretched man, a man of unclean lips. You know, I. I need to, I, I see where I need to do better. I see where I need to be better. I see, you know, where I need to be more and do more and some things that I need to clean up within myself, some things I need to change about how I'm living and change about how I'm thinking and how I'm seeing things. You know, it allowed him to open his eyes, his spiritual eyes and remove some spiritual blinders that he he realized, he realized the Bible says that you know, our righteousness is as filthy rags, you know, when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, understanding the greatness of God and, and, and all that he is, you know, there's nothing that we can ever do to earn all that God has done for us through his son, Jesus Christ, all that he continues to do for us every day, every day, every second of every day. You know, we can never earn that. That's why we have grace. God knew that we couldn't. He sent his son, Jesus, that we may be able to take advantage of grace, just simply grace, okay? Hey, Cousin Kay, thanks for joining. Cynthia, I see you on as well. We're in Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. We're just breaking that down. So self-examination was part of this process of, of gaining a new perspective, determining what is your current perspective, Okay. But after he did that self-examination and realized that he was a man of unclean lips, that he was just, he was undone, woe is me, is what he said. Verse 6 says, Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having his hand a live coal, which he took from the altar and touched my mouth with it. So what happened after Isaiah realized, oh gosh, I, you know, God, I need some work. You know, I, I, I know I'm not where I need to be. God took action. God took action through this angel, okay, he sent in this vision. He took action, and um, after he was able to have that self-examination, he took some action that began to transform Isaiah. You know, he had to do some purging. You know, he had to, he had to, to purge some sin away, purge some things away that need to cut some things away, prune and purge. And sometimes we have to do that in order for God to, to elevate us to the next level. You know, sometimes we got to get rid of some stuff. You know, we got to throw away some stuff. We got to, you know, we got to deal with some things that we've just, 
not dealt with. You know, we didn't feel the need like we had to, didn't, you know, just didn't give much attention to it. But there are some things that hinder us from being elevated into where God would have us to be, how he wants to use us, how he wants to bless us. And um, it takes some self-examination. It takes being willing to be available for God to do what he wants to do, willing to be purged so he can do what he wants to do in our life. And this is where Isaiah was. This is where he was. So that purging for growth that allowed him to, to be elevated into, into the next level that God wanted to use him as this great, great, great prophet that would speak to the children of Israel on God's behalf. He be, became a, a great, probably one of the greatest mouthpiece, okay, other than Jesus Christ himself, you know, that God used to, to, to deliver his message, to deliver his message to the disobedient children of Israel, okay, um, but this is, this is what this is about. So God had a greater work for the prophet and he commissioned him. This was part of his, his commissioning. Okay. And yes, it's possible that, you know, in our lives, there's God may take us through some sort of commissioning. He's got to deal with us in certain ways. You've got to go through certain tests at times. Um, and, you know, he, he tests our faith, tests our trust, tests how much we really believe in him, that we really believe what we say about him, that we really have committed our lives to him, that we are willing to surrender everything to him, okay, that we have that much faith, you know, to go, even though we don't know where we're going, don't know what he's doing, but we're just saying, okay, God, I trust to do what you want to do with me, you know, sometimes we have to, we have to get to that point in order for him to do what he wants to do in our lives. We got to change our perspective. We got to change our perspective on how we're living. So let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Um, so yes, our perspective, let me talk about a little bit about perspective. So perspective, all right, has to do with our point of view, you know, our point of view, what we see, you know, what we see from where, where we're sitting in our lives, just if you were, you know, I'm sitting here at my desk in my office, my point of view, I can see, you know, what's in front of me, what I think about what's in front of me, how I interpret what's in front of me, what I, what I do about what I see, okay, is a different thing. That has to do with my perception, how I perceive things. And the two of them play a part together. They do play a part together. We have to understand what, what our point of view is. And then we have to understand how we perceive what we see, because when we determine how we perceive what we see, we'll determine how we respond to what we see, what attitude we take, okay, about what we see, okay, what stance we take, okay, about what we see. So there are, there are times when we um, have to deal with what we see, and again, um, be prepared to take away any blinders that we might have on any blinders that might be hindering um, our understanding, okay, our enlightenment that we want God to give us. And then, and, and, and allow God to deal with how we perceive certain things so that he can give us the understanding that we want. You know, how do we understand certain things that we see? And we know that, you know, you, you may have, you know, had this, uh, done this little test before in the past when we're younger or just in various team building exercises, whatever, you know, what the way I see something may be completely different from what someone else sees. You know, when I say something, I mean this, but somebody else could say the same thing and they mean something totally different. You know, it just, it just depends on how we see things. Okay. And it's the same even with, with the word of God, the Bible, you know, many, many debates have gone on because of, you know, not because this is a question of this is the Bible. They know it's the Bible, but how do they interpret what's in the Bible? Many, many debates about how they, they, they got a point of view, but their perception is just totally different. We got to understand what our perception and then what we perceive it to be. All right. Hey, my sister, Carolyn, I see you on. Thanks so much for joining. So we're in Isaiah 6. We're talking about what is your perspective? Okay. So I was just talking about the Bible, the Bible. So for me, I know this is my big old Bible. I know this is my Bible. I know it's a book. But how I uh, perceive this, not just what my perspective is, I see what it is, but I don't see it just as a book. You know, I see it as the inspired word of God. I see it as, um, gosh, the, 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 the meat, the word of life in here. 
Oh gosh, I, I, I see it as, as a number of things. My this is my my book for for living my life, my instruction book. You know, this 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 has power in the words in here when I read it and I take it in. Um, this this is God speaking to me, you know, on paper. So it's not just a book, you know, it's not just a book on the bestsellers list, and that's all it is to it. No, 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 no. I perceive this more than that. Okay, while others might perceive it altogether differently. They see it's the Bible because we call it the Bible, but how they perceive it, okay, is, is might be completely different than how I perceive uh, what it is and not just what it looks like. Okay, hope that makes sense. So let's just move on. Um, so what we must, we must know what we believe before we're able to understand what we see from our own point of view. We have to determine what we actually believe. You know, what do we believe? Okay, that's gonna determine our own point of view. Okay, and so we, we have to take time to, to stop and, and ask ourselves that question. Okay, what are we gonna, if, if God is doing something in our lives, okay, are you willing uh, to believe what he, what he said and what he has told you in, his, in, in scripture and what he's doing in your life to reveal some things to you? Um, or are you going to go on your own logic? You know, and if it doesn't make sense, you're going to reject it. Or are you going to go on the word of God and trusting that he always knows what's best? He always knows what's right. Um, he always knows what he's doing. Uh, today, as a matter of fact, um, at my job, I was talking to a good friend of mine and uh, she happened to have um, a cross around her neck. I have a cross around my neck. So we both have a cross and we know it's the cross, but on her cross, she has Jesus Christ hanging on the cross. And of course we had a little bit of discussion about that. Um, and I told her, I said, well, you know, you know, Christ didn't on the cross anymore. And she was like, well, yeah, I know, but that's where it started. You know, that's 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 where everything started him on the cross. And I like, well, that is tr that is true. But, you know, for me, I wear the cross not to just remember what where it started, that he died on the cross. I want to go beyond that. For me, I don't wear Jesus Christ on the cross because he's no longer on the cross. And the, and the, and, and the wonderful realization and understanding my point of view and my perception of the cross is that he died, he was buried, and he rose again. You know, he was resurrected, so Jesus is alive. He's no longer on the cross, right? That's my perspective and my perception of the cross. Whereas, you know, she had a different one. We both agreed it was the cross, but she had a different um, perception about wearing the cross around her neck versus how I wear mine. You understand what I'm saying? I'm hoping this is making sense. So we got we have a have a certain perspective about, okay, what we see and what we believe and our attitude towards it, you know, how we respond to that sort of thing. Okay. So moving on. Um, God always knows what he's doing. We have to understand that he always knows what he's doing. He always has a plan. So even in, in Isaiah's situation, you know, where his, you know, King Isaiah died and then things, God started shifting things in his life. Uh, as I said, we don't necessarily know for sure that King Isaiah had to die, but we do know that, you know, for us, you know, things happen in our lives. Challenges happen in our lives. Trials and tests happen in our lives. Certain things happen in our lives and some things must happen. You know, some things must happen. We, we may have to lose some friends, okay, um, in order, you know, for God to come in our life and do something different. You know, we may have to lose a job in order for him to give us another job, you know, a better job. You know, it, it, we may have to experience um, certain things so that we, you know, he can push us into our purpose and our call, the calling on our life, just as he did with Isaiah. Certain that some things had to happen in his life and he, he pushed him into his, his calling. Okay. His commission happened when that, when that, you know, took place, that death took place. And even in our lives at times, sometimes, you know, we lose a loved one and, you know, we have so many questions. Why, what do we do now? Um, you know, what's next in our lives and, you know, we got to figure out how to take the next step and, 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 you know, we want to know well, why God and why now and what, what could have been, should have been, what, you know, and all these, all these questions we may never have an answer to, may never have an answer to, but we have to have the perspective, okay, 
again, trusting in God that um, whatever he's doing, you know, he's got a plan. He always has a plan. He always has a plan. OK, and we and we won't have to be in a place to know how to look to God, you know, how to look to God, to have that kind of perspective. OK, even when we again, if you get laid off, I was laid off um, for quite a few months. It was a time for me to do some self-examination, some interest, self-introspection and to really seek God for what, you know, what's next? What's what's next? What is it that you're requiring of me to do? What are you doing? What's your plan? So I know you know, um, where I'm supposed to be in this season, you know, a shifting took place just out of the blue, this shifting. And, um, it was, it was an interesting time in my life during that time. I, uh, it's the, almost exactly the, to the day that I was, I was told my whole team was getting laid off was the day that I'm actually turning paper into the bank to, to buy my house. Okay. And I had to stop and me and God had to have a conversation. OK, because it didn't make sense to me, um, but I trusted him. I went forward with it and he gave me a, a time of um, communing with him, spending time with him, seeking him. And I had to be completely open to whatever he wanted to do in my life. And if he wanted to do some purging, some pruning, um, it, it was a, it was a test of my faith. OK, it was a definite faith walk. Um, I knew, of course, I'm, I'm in ministry. I knew, you know, I had a calling on my life to preach. I've been preaching for a while, but, you know, it was time to shift into something else. And he made the time available. I didn't understand it, but that's when this online ministry was birthed, was during that time. And, you know, he, he did not open the door for me to even get a, another job until I, I allowed him to um, to do what he wanted to do, you know, just to trust him. Those all those months, I had to trust him that every bill would be paid, that he would open that door. Um, it came right up to where, you know, it, it was coming to the end of the dollars, and I just had to go forward and just continue to trust him. And sure enough, sure enough, all of a sudden, a door opened. I had a job within a week, and every, you know, he just he just shifted it all, and and and. You know, I was willing, I was available, and um, and my perspective had to change. It had to change. My, my whole situation and what I saw and what I was concerned about and worried about, I had to every day change my perspective and what I saw what was going on in my life and how I perceived it was going on in my life. I didn't have to have all the answers. I just had to learn how to take the blinders off and see God. Focus on him and what he's doing in my life, you know, what he's trying to do and say, woe is me, for I am undone, <laughs> like Isaiah said, and and allow God to, you know, do what he needed to do in me to go and be elevated to the next level he wanted to take me. So that's my story. Um, hey, Lynette, thanks for joining. We're in Isaiah 6. So. 1 Corinthians, let's just get into another scripture, another cross-reference. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. It says, But the unbelieving man or woman does not accept the teachings of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he is incapable of understanding them, because they are spiritually discerned and appreciated. But the spiritual man or woman the spiritually minded, spiritually mature Christian judges all things, yet is, him, yet is himself judged by no one. For who has known the mind and purposes of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ to be guided by his thoughts and purposes. So we're, I read this particular passage because we're talking about um, uh, having a perspective and a perception such that we, we believe in what God says, we believe in his word. We believe in what he's leading and guiding us to. We believe in, in how the Holy Spirit is operating in our lives. You know, we believe that he, he has a plan and a purpose for us. We believe that when something shifts in our lives, you know, our perspective is or should be, okay, God, what are you doing? You know, what, what are we getting ready to do right now? Where are we getting ready to go? You know, you know, what, what is this all about? I've had to learn how to take that perspective 
you know, in my life when things happen. I'm not real good at it. <laughs> Let me just say that because I, I'm a stickler for order and, and, and things of that nature. But when, when something changes unexpectedly, things don't go exactly how I planned them to go, you know, my first reaction is, okay, well, wait a minute. Wait, 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 you know, and can't figure it out. Don't understand what's really going on. I, I, I have to stop and say, okay, Lord, um, you're doing something. I don't know what you're doing and what you're expecting of me in this thing. Um, but help me to do what it is that you are requiring of me to do. Show me what you want me to do. Show me what I'm supposed to get out of this thing. Give me the right perspective and the right perception about what's going on in my life right now. You know, what is this all about? And be willing to, to, to be still long enough, okay, to hear what he's got to say, you know, to, to, to see what he's doing, okay, to understand where he may pick you up and plop you somewhere that's totally unexpected, you know, to have you go in a direction that you may feel totally inept, totally unprepared, you know, just, you know, you don't know what to do with it, but we're trusting in him to go anyhow. We're trusting that he has put in us what we already need, okay, and to go with it, to go with it. Let him use you. The right perspective and the right perception about what it is that God is doing in our lives. So we, we have to get in the habit of, of, of being a believing man and woman of God so that we can spiritually discern some things, spiritually understand some things, because if, if we don't allow ourselves to be that kind of, of Christian, that kind of person, there are many things that go on in this world, the way this world is, that um, we'll never be able to really understand um, the awesomeness of God, the power of God, you know, what God is actually doing because we insist on seeing with our own eyes. We insist on doing things the way we do them in our humanness, okay, in our own flesh. And, you know, God doesn't operate like that. He's spirit. You know, he's high above everything else on a totally different realm than what we live in. And we have a tendency to put um, um, boundary. We bind him up and, you know, and all these boundaries and, and we got we to gotta move away um, all that so that he can do what he wants to do. You know, we put him in a box and think it's supposed to fit what, where we, how we understand things. But no, our perspective has to change. How we perceive things many times have to change. Or the result is that we miss out on what it is he's trying to show us. We miss out on what it is he's trying to give us and what it is he's trying to do in us and through us, okay? Many things that go on in our lives particularly as Christians, particularly as Christians, um, may not even be for us, may not even have anything to do with us getting something out of it, okay? Many times it's simply about um, God working through you for somebody else, for somebody else. It may have nothing to do with um, um, what we want, okay? It's about being a vessel, Okay, so that God can use to bless somebody else, to show somebody else who God is, to take someone who may be hurting through something, you know, to get to a place uh, where they too understand that God loves them and God is with them as well. So we, you know, we, we have a, a certain perspective we have to try to stay um, uh, in tune to so that we can hear from God and see what he is doing. So the first dynamic, I'm going to get into my dynamics for tonight, and then we're going to be good to go. Sometimes it is that something must die, must be removed, must be changed in our lives in order for us to truly see God, to see ourselves, and to be used by God to receive that that he wants to give us in the process. We were just talking about that. Sometimes some things must happen, and it may seem awful. It may seem you know very hurtful even. Sometimes some things must happen. God allows certain things, okay, because he's taken us down a certain path that we must go down. We have, to, we have to travel it. There's a journey that sometimes we just have to take in order to get where God wants us to be, okay? Sometimes we have to. Certain things have to be moved out of the way, 
Certain people have to be moved out of the way. Certain jobs have to be moved out of the way. If we, you know, if we're so bogged down with the job that we can't do any work for the Lord, then, you know, he may have to do some job shifting. <laughs> you know, he may have to do some job shifting. Um, but yes, we want to keep that in mind. Second dynamic that I wanted to talk about is. Um, it is only when we truly perceive or understand who God is and the magnitude of his glory that we are able to acquire a new perspective. You know, when we can actually come to understand how big he really is, um, the, his, his righteousness, his sovereignty, um, um, just, just his awesomeness. Um, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. You know, he's omnipotent. He's he's all powerful, omniscient, all knowing. You know, he's he's that great of, of a God. You know, he's everywhere all the time. <laughs> you know, uh, nothing's impossible for him to do. You know, he sees everything. Um, he knows all about you more than you know all about you. So that kind of awesomeness, um, you know, he created everything, you know. So, you know, when you try to you know, line yourself up with him. Oh God, there's no comparison. There's absolutely no comparison. You, I mean, you, you see yourself and I tell you what, you ought to be humbled. I mean, you truly ought to be humble when you realize, you know, God, as great as he is, would take the time to come down and, um, spare your life every day, every second of every day. You know, he sends angels to watch over you and angels to make sure that when you go to bed at night, that he keeps you through the night, you know, as your heart com you know, just completely slows down. But he wakes you up in the morning. Every morning you get right on up. He wakes you right up. OK. And, and he starts you on your day. You know, he makes sure that you have what you need. OK. Uh, you know, he's working some things out behind the scenes. and You don't even know he's working it out. You know, that accident that, you know, could have been, you know, he didn't let it happen. Think about that many times. I'm always rushing, always rushing and traffic. And, you know, if I'm running late for something, a lot of traffic and you have to wonder, you know, God may have said it this way because I maybe I missed the accident that I was supposed to be a part of. And he said no. You know, he said no. So, you know, a certain perspective and a certain perception on how God is moving in our lives and what he's doing and what he desires to do in our lives, just as he did with Isaiah, just as he did with Isaiah. Third dynamic, it is the perception or the understanding of our own reality that governs the perspective or our attitude we take towards our lives. Let me say it again. It is the understanding of our own reality that governs uh, the attitude we take towards our lives. So, Depending on how we perceive or understand certain things going on in our lives, the reality in our life. I mean, when I say that, for example, Isaiah, okay, he was hunky-dory, doing well when King Isaiah, uh, Isaiah was alive and, you know, working, you know, in the palace probably around all this royalty, special attention, special privileges, all these things. You know, it was nice for him until the king died. And then some things had to shift and God came down and, and showed him himself. He showed him himself. So his, his reality changed. His reality had to change. He got a chance to see himself um, in, in such a way that he hadn't seen himself before. God had to show him some things in, in some areas where he was lacking. You know, he was lacking. He was enjoying all these different things going on. But there were some things that God required of him that... Um, he needed him to, to, to um, first be purged. You know, Isaiah had to be willing to be purged, number one. And then after that, then God commissioned him to go. He gave him the call to go. You know, no longer will you stay here. No longer will you be in this place. I have a better place. I have another place I need you to work and to serve. Um, there are some things and some, and some people that I need you to go and talk to and to bring my word and to speak into them. So that they might know uh, my my guidance, my direction, my love, and be saved. Okay, um, so he was he he was he was used mightily by God, but he had to be purged first. He had to come to the reality of where he currently was in his life, and and God needed him to be in a different place. So his attitude had to change once he saw himself. 
his attitude changed. And he said, whoa, I am undone and a man of unclean lips. And when God asked him, who should I send? He said, send me. He said, I'm ready to go now. I'm ready to go now. So his whole attitude had to change, okay, at that point. And that governed how he responded to God's call on his life. If he was reluctant and he was, you know, uh, coming up with all these excuses and thinking, oh, I like it right here in the palace, you know, you know, I might be able to take that king position up here now that, you know, King Isaiah is gone. But he didn't do that. He was willing to give up that lifestyle in order for God to, to use him in the way that he wanted to use him. So last dynamic, I believe I have one more that I think I wanted to go through. Nope, that was all. Yep, nope, just those three dynamics for tonight. Um, I'm not going to get into all the different examples that I have for the sake of time. But mind you, there are others in the Word of God, if you study your Bible, that had to have the same kind of uh, perspective change in order for them to understand who Jesus Christ was and what he was doing in their lives. Read up on Nicodemus. Nicodemus you know, he, he, he had, he asked God, what must I do to be saved? He saw all the work that Jesus was doing and he knew that this was a different man, this, that he was really the Messiah. So he had a different perspective. The woman at the well, she had a different perspective. When Jesus came looking for her at the well, she had to get a different perspective. Um, Paul and Silas, when they were, when they were jailed, not to get into all the details of that story either, but you know, the jailer himself, you know, once he saw them singing and he, he saw the word, the, the move of God upon them in that jail cell with the earthquake, he had to have a new, he got a new perspective as well. So, and King Darius, Daniel in the lion's den, go ahead and read up on Daniel in the lion's den. We know this story, but King Darius had to have a change too. He thought he was going to be able to kill Daniel, but no, God spared Daniel in the lion's den. So King Darius was like, oh God. Who is your God? I need to know your God. Your God is a real God. He had a new perspective. So we too have to be willing to be in a position and a place um, to take advantage of the new perspective and the new perception that God um, wants to, to do in our lives, to, to create in us so that he can um, take us to another level, Take us to another level in our understanding. Take us to another level in, in, in who we are and our calling and our purpose and the plan he has for our lives. Um, and not only for ourselves, but for others, how he wants to bless others through you. Um, a new perspective in our lives that, again, don't get swayed when things begin to shift. Don't get swayed when God is trying to maybe uproot some things. Don't get swayed. Um, when something new out of the blue comes along in your life, um, God blesses in a number of different ways. He can use anybody he wants to use whenever he want to use them, but make sure that we are in a, in a certain mindset and a certain perspective that we go to God and say, okay, what are you doing? What do you need from me? What are you requiring of me? Where are we going? Show me what you would have for me to do, where you would have for me to be, um, and just be willing to let him do the work in you, okay? So again, we just went through Isaiah 6, 1 through 8, and just kind of broke that down um, a little bit. Um, and I hope that you will come away with um, taking a look at um, what's going on in your lives and what maybe needs to be a change of perspective and perception as you're going through your, your journey, um, hopefully with the Lord. Um, but that's the first thing you need to have, a journey with the Lord, okay? All right, so thank you all for joining tonight. I hope you all have a wonderful evening, a uh, wonderful weekend as well. I hope to see you on Sunday night for our Sunday night prayer. Also, um, if this blessed you, please feel free to share this once I post it as well. All right, so thanks again for joining and be blessed.